Broadcasting from the Hyatt Regency in Seattle, Washington, Solutions Review is on location at the FME User Conference 2025, the peak of data and AI. Brought to you by Safe Software. We're back and we are with Joe Humza, Manager of Information Systems at Racker. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you're here doing. Uh, yeah, so uh, with the utilization of FME and within my position at Racker, we've been able to uh, automate a lot of business processes, uh, whether it is uh, billing related, which was one of my first challenges that I had to meet uh, in order to um, take a look at our billing models and where we were uh, doing paper-based billing, which was cumbersome, had a, a huge backlog, three to four months backlog for us to be able to submit uh, session notes for health uh, services and get that reimbursed. So the agency that I work for, it's a, a Medicaid reimbursement model, so we have to go through a lot of different regulatory requirements uh, uh, with providing all the different services that we offer and also billing for that. So uh, what we've been able to really accomplish is just that as the first project, but also taking a look at compliance as it pertains to the regulations that we have to follow, um, and especially as it applies to health information and remaining compliant that way. So how long have you been working with FME? I've been working with FME since 2018, so that was kind of when my That's, first challenge was and trying to figure out. That was the first time you started using it? Right. Yep. And, and what were you doing then? Were you in the, in the same role? Uh, so I actually joined the agency with a, with this role, with the co the expectation and intent that we take a look at our, our systems and determining where we can become more efficient with them. And so you're um, bringing FME to the party as well? I didn't actually have FME experience at the time. Oh, okay. So I was presented a challenge. So they were challenge. part of a review? So you, you found them in the course of trying to figure out what the best solution was here? Yeah, exactly. So I, I called up customer service. No wonder you're here. <laughs> <laughs> So I called out customer service and presented like the, these are the, the, the challenges that I'm facing. Uh, I'd like to try to use the, your product to be able to accomplish that and sure enough I've been able so to. So how did you find it? Uh, it was just really just internet searching of I'm, I'm looking for something okay. where I can uh, uh, accomplish really just systems integrations. Interesting. So now break it down. So, so how do you use it? Uh, so really depends on what the challenge is and uh, uh, throughout the years there's always been these new challenges these new uh, ideas or different limitations that that we have so uh, since we have so many programs we have a lot of different uh, systems in place that meet a particular need of a, a, a program which means that we have all systems that are, could potentially be all standalone systems and we use FME to be able to uh, integrate that, pull data uh, out of it, pull uh, um, knowledge and statistical information out of it to be able to, to actually um, uh, make decisions from that data. Uh, and with our automations that, that we have been able to accomplish, especially sp uh, specifically focusing on um, security, uh, compliance as it pertains to health related information right. is that we have um, uh, categorically the requirements to uh, make sure that everyone within the agency, 800 employees, uh, have access to the things that they need to have access to, but don't have access to things Correct. they shouldn't, right? So that role-based access uh, yep. uh, that uh, we are able to achieve with automation now. We can tap into our uh, HR system to know the status of any given employee uh, uh, for onboarding and offboarding, and we can automate any action, whether it's uh, uh, with account creations, putting them in the right access groups that they need to be in, if their job role changes, they get removed from what they don't need anymore and added to, to access groups that they do need. And we're able to kind of control uh, inadvertent uh, uh, and uh, anomalies as it pertains to accounts. So if somebody were to leave the agency, we have automations that will actually uh, go through specific procedures that we have in place that typically would have been normal uh, or manual procedures that uh, somebody with an IT would have to, to take. So, so, so why did you why did you settle on FME? What was the uh, what was the winning benefits? And... Well, price point was definitely a factor. Price point. Uh, yep. So, it, uh, being nonprofit, uh, we have to uh, take into consideration sure. price for, for everything. So, the licensing uh, was. Uh, uh, within our budget and the annual maintenance is within our budget. So we've been able to get a, a huge return on investment. It's a good story too. Um, you've been at it for seven years? I have. And seven years with FME? 
as well, or seven years uh, with solving both, the problem? Uh, with FME and solving just various problems. Same. So at this point, we have 45 uh, um, workflows that we run. That 45. Just, while I'm here, they're, they're automating a lot of the things that I don't have to necessarily pay attention to while we're talking. So you're pretty comfortable with the, with the system? I have become accustomed to uh, whenever we face any limitations, especially with third-party vendors, where we ask for something specific and they say, well, we, we can't do that. FME has always been the tool where I can raise my hand and say, well, yeah, we can do that. You just have to tie into the data. Exactly. Through some transformer. Just because it's got, got the capability of tapping into any type of data source, transform it however we need to, do different statistical analysis uh, on it, and, and, and kind of detections of what we might be looking for procedurally, and take action on that, or supply an, another system with information that it needs, or send a report to somebody that needs to make a decision about that data. And so I, I appreciate that the, uh, that, that the industry here may sometimes be somewhat bureaucratic would you would you say potentially in uh, like the health care system it really depends uh, but i can honestly say that the agency that i work for doesn't necessarily uh, operate that way well i'm thinking more the peripheral so as you're trying to connect the dots that maybe uh that maybe it gets a little sticky and having something that that you can kind of where, where there might be initial resistance to making some sort of automation process? When people really see the, 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 what we can accomplish, they tend to be more excited about it. Yeah. Um, but I can uh, admit that uh, really with what we've been able to accomplish is the ability for any, any given system that needs data in a particular way, that we can provide that in a very efficient way and in a very specific uh, way of how they need that along with doing all those different checks that we need to in order to make sure that data is accurate in the way that it's expected to be. So as it pertains to regulations, yeah, we have to go through that due diligence yep. of verifying data accuracy in order for us to uh, get the, the, those reimbursements. Right. And uh, and so how do you deal with, uh, with the Safe Software team? in general do you, do you have a lot of interactions with them or is it more as the support a factor i use the the uh support community a, a little bit yeah. um but uh, with all the different solutions that we've been able to come up with uh <laughs> you're just on your own thing we, we, uh, for, for almost everything i've kind of built a framework for everything so all the different data types that we have <laughs> great. Or, or, or the different sources of data we have already have frameworks that were built that we can always just build upon and expand that even further with any kind of new idea that somebody might bring to the table so you must be pivotal at this point as a uh as a person in the uh well as the manager of information services it's a fairly large organization. I do understand the, 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 a lot of the complexities, especially as it kind of pertains to the different programs with the agency. And that's kind of the, the, the cool thing about working in IT is that you work with everybody. You have to understand what they do. You have to, to meet them where they are. Yep. And, uh, but it really creates opportunity to really expand your horizon and knowledge and, and your portfolio of, of skills. So where did you, um, where have you kind of pushed your self to the limit in, in any of these 45 implementations that you've done like what 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 one is kind of like you know on the top shelf of the joe homza hall of fame um so i i think it really does kind of point to that that security compliance that we're able to achieve yeah so uh, the, the, ba the basic requirements are, say, you, you just need to have processes in place in order to uh, make sure that accounts are clean, access, uh, role-based access is is uh, ap appropriately set up, and uh, and that everything is inventory, and you know where everything is at any given time. That always haven't been a manual process or pro uh, things that just hadn't even been done so far. Uh, that's really, I think, what where. Um, uh, I've been kind of that, more that the go-to person with uh, being able to accomplish those things that just have not been able to, we haven't been able to achieve whatsoever, yep. let, let alone with, even with a manual process just because there's not the people time, uh, people power or the time that's available uh, for them to do that or even necessarily the know-how because there's so many complexities and things you always have to keep in mind in order for uh, to recognize that um, some 
uh, for, as an example, uh, 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 data and database is uh, uh, valid and, and is uh, entered in correctly in order for it to actually uh, be uh, billable or passed on to the next system in order to actually uh, have all of our systems interoperable. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's so cool to hear. It's great that you... Uh, that you're able to come out and, and share it. Do you get, what do you get out of a, an event like this? Do you get to talk to some folks? I'm sure they come up to you after you present and, and ask you all kinds of questions. Uh, yes, yeah, so my presentation was yesterday and, and somebody uh, came up to me to that effect of, I've never thought about using FME in this way. Right. And that's the cool thing about it is that no, no matter what the challenge is that I'm finding, is FME can provide the solution for it just because it has such a broad range of capability. And yeah, it was originally intended for um, uh, uh, spatial data, Yeah, but I'm bringing that, that concept into business processes no, I, and efficiencies. I, I can believe they yeah. love the fact that you're doing that. Uh, because I think a lot, of the, a lot of the examples are kind of that classic uh, geospatial um, integration and the fact that you're using it completely outside of that, I'm sure is exciting. For yeah. them to see. Yeah, because there's just so many complexities, especially with having to, to be governed by so many to, uh, regulatory bodies, is that the tool can keep track of and things. Are you for just us. It's, are you just a, a, a you know kind of a, a single? You're not. Are you working with any like partners that are like are that they kind of help you do this, or are you? This is just you with with the license. You picked it up. Mm -hmm. You just started implement it, and now you're the man. Well, I, I would consider everyone that I work with within the agency kind of the partner. Just yeah, because. no, but I'm thinking more like <laughs> right. some of these guys that are that are around us in the uh, partner zone. Uh, at, well, actually, yeah. So I've been kind of you know, flying solo on on that, that respect. <laughs> That's great. Uh, just because really the the, the uh, problems that uh, have I've been faced have been very unique to even our agency. So when you have a unique problem, then that uh, does re kind of require a unique solution. Yeah, good for you for doing that. Uh, it, it's it's always a pleasure to see somebody kind of just go head in, get a tool, start doing the work, and just master it. Sounds like that's exactly what you've been doing. Seven years at it. Well done. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for coming over. And the uh, the support documentation, it's, it's pretty good. The, the community uh, within FME is actually pretty good. So a couple of times I've... Uh, uh, have run into a problem and somebody will take a look at a flow and, and just point out like this this might be the trans uh, uh, letter that you might need or take a look at it th this particular way but uh, once you have and that's the, in the, the basics support community in the framework that you're getting that yeah absolutely. yeah yeah but what, once you kind of have uh, some of that the basic knowledge it just kind of uh, is uh, a, a repeat in context especially as it pertains to different uh, uh, vendor systems that might use very similar platforms or very simple or, or the same kind of techniques but FME allows me to kind of take what uh, any limitations that they might have and build what we can, uh, need to internally to make sure that yeah, it's, it's we, totally we, we cool. have the insight that we need. I think it's great and uh, yeah I, like I said, congratulations on uh, on the success, and uh, it's it's great to see uh, Safe Software recognize somebody who who's doing such. I think ultimately what they want, which is to kind of push the software out into the into kind of the a broader application. Yeah, and there's not a single area. application that that uh, it, it might have been created for, but not, there's not a single application. Well, and I think that, there's that, probably a lot of a lot of ways you could have gone with other solutions. You probably considered other solutions. There's probably a lot of other solutions you could have used. And really what attracted me to FME is, um, if, if you've never used it, sure, it, it, it looks scary. If, uh, if you have, especially have a, a, a problem and you have to get to that solution, but you don't necessarily know how to get there, it is a tool that you, it's easily to, it's easy to learn to get to that solution. Yeah. So if you kind of uh, break it down to, into simple uh, steps, within each transformer, you don't necessarily have to, to know how to code, even if you, uh, um, but if you have the, the knowledge of coding, 
and that it makes it actually uh, easier to kind of build things. But it and is, do you have the knowledge of coding? I actually I have an undergrad degree in information technology and a graduate degree in information. Uh, oh, okay. security so within those programs I've taken a few programming courses okay. but really the beauty of FME is that you don't have to to know that yep. it's beneficial to know it but you can actually uh, learn how to, to put the entire uh, an entire solution together without actually having to know that the coding that it takes on the back end well again thanks for coming by good story uh, and best of luck with uh, with continued working with FME um, yeah Thanks for swinging by. Yeah, thank you. If your business would like to be featured in a future event, contact us today.